The other thing too um, is um, I had mentioned to Michael uh, before you jumped on again that uh, what is the role or the importance of the songwriter in the digital age? Well, the digital digital age doesn't they have in bearing on the songwriter. Like as far as I'm concerned, the songwriter's job is to have experience write it down in a way that can be useful to somebody else to tell a story or to inspire feeling or to account for history. And whether what what all happens once that song is released out into the world, you know, uh, whether there's a digital age or no digital age, there's always been songwriters and in a thousand years when some other, you know, format is around and digital is, is the archaic way of putting out music they'll still be songwriters so i'm not sh i think that the two are mutually exclusive as it pertains to like how we make our living yeah it's challenging because they uh, people don't like buy physical records but we do have since in this day and age i feel like we artists are a little bit more conservative or a little savvy about protecting their publishing yeah i, I feel like in a lot of ways writers have never been more protected yeah. I feel very supported by my publishing company, that's for sure, like, in terms of protecting our assets uh, well, we've, yeah, as we've, songwriters, but... We've always, um, I mean, that's kind of the way that we approach business from the beginning, <clears throat> it's just to own everything. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, I think what he's talking about is just the, uh, like, the writer in the world. Like, what do you, what's, how important is that? I guess, like, a voice in the static kind of thing and, well I guess it kind of you could go with the way like on one hand you could look at it as the it's never been easier to put your art or your writing out there like to self-publish or whatever like poet and author and songwriters or whatever but because there's so much of it it's harder to it is harder to make a splash is that what you're kind of in? Well, I feel like it's hard for somebody to to stay to not see the next thing, you know, flick on, on the screen, and and for yeah. people just to sit down and pay attention, you yeah. know, attention span is is of the society today is really, you know, everything moves so fast. Yeah, how has um how has the meaning of the word love um remained the same or changed for you as you've gotten older? That's a good question. I guess when you're a teenager. Love feels like some kind of sickness, like some kind of syndrome that you're physically struck by because you don't know how to manage it, all, you know. And now, you know, we're old married people with a toddler and aged parents who we love, and, like, love is, like, so much more intense and complex and powerful and than it is as you, as you grow and you get wise. I think uh, I really, you know, talk about, like, who was cracking open love, like, I'm not much on royal or royal weddings, but I did enjoy watching the Episcopal Bishop telling all those Brit British about how feverish love can, like, shake you up and, like, make you fundamentally not emotionally British at all. <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I, was digging, I was digging kind of like what he was saying about it, but, um, yeah, I, um, I guess with all the like rhetorics and and like back to like like the bumper stickers pertaining to love it is true i believe it i believe in it more than i believe in anything i believe in love as much as i believe in god i don't think those two things are mutually exclusive you know yeah. i feel like that's the power it's the power of creation love what about you anyway, michael i'll get me started on that <laughs> what's that what about you? Uh, how has the meaning of the word love um, changed or remained the same for you as you've gotten older? Well, I think that uh, especially a you know, child changes, you know, changes everything. It's like you, um, when, when a baby shows up and everybody says, oh, you're just going to love it automatically i mean it's like it's kind of a process this is a whole you know this is a whole other conversation but it's but it really is and there's a lot of you know patience and a lot of 
just showing up and um, willingness to put your, you know, to, it's, it's like about the long game, um, willing to show up every day and, and, you know, it can be, you can have really bad days and you can have bad weeks and everything, but I, I think it's a lot about, uh, you know, just being, you know, just being persistent and being, um, willing to to show up every day well, i definitely think that could apply to like just uh um trying to live a good life in general too you know the idea of what you want out of life and at the end of the day yeah right. uh, yeah i mean we'll, like we'll go to uh we're married people we go you know we go see a, a marriage counselor every once in a while and a lot of times everything is going great and you know the things are going great in our marriage. We're just you know showing love by by just checking in and you know yeah making the drive or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, what is the the best advice you ever got that you initially blew off that you still ca- that you carry with you now, but you initially blew off? Hmm. Let me think. I'm not one for blowing off good advice. Uh, I'm a I'm an advice list taker. You know, here's here's some <laughs> flossing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> floss. You got to floss. They said you got to floss. You didn't necessarily listen. And death creeps into and, the gum. And death creeps into the gum. We have a great dentist, Eddie White. <laughs> That's <laughs> the best preventative care ever. Is good teeth. It is, and when you're out there on the road and every, like, you're exposed to a lot anyway, like, the best, taking care of your feet, taking care of your teeth, you know, staying out of the sun, these things that you take care of your meat bag enough so that you can walk around in your damn meat bag for 80, 90 years, <laughs> those, that's the advice that we're heeding now that we were frivolous about in our, in our 20s, that, you know, we're not vegan, and we're not sober, and we're not, not eating, like, sugar and stuff, but we're trying to think about being here and being physically able and being like oh able to run around with our kids kids who waited too long to have <laughs> <laughs> well um i don't know if you have anything to add to that michael um uh no <laughs> uh well my final question is um what is a life creating and performing music and and touring the world and, and meeting people from all walks of life, what has that taught you about what it means to be a human being? I mean, brother, brotherhood of man is a real thing. If everybody is somebody's baby. Everybody who has children, whatever their cultural values that may be different from yours, they want best for their children. They want their children to be happy and to survive. And the, the need for food, shelter, medicine, and like the love of your family and neighbors is a universal need. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable how like lucky Michael and I feel like we have it. Just we see what people can do with so little, and and be and yet survive and even thrive. You know, it's amazing. Or even just be grateful. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah. What, anything to add to that, Living Mike? There's, yeah, you, I mean, you just, there's so much to learn outside of your bubble. I think that that's, uh, that, uh, you know, people should um, just get out, like, go away from where you grew up and uh, meet people that you wouldn't normally, you know, that you, that you wouldn't have crossed paths, paths with in in you know, some small town that you might have grown up in, it always, always makes you a better person.